Good evening. On behalf of the parish and the faith community of St. Mary's, I welcome you and those who are participating by live stream in the Franklin Community Channel to our holy church and sanctuary. Our parish is honored to be the host site for this special prayer service for our town and its members. We can sense, and by being New Englanders, that when the leaves start falling in the grocery stores and stock, uh, stocking special spices and food items, that Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Unlike other holidays that are more gift-focused, Thanksgiving has become a holiday when we give thanks for what we have and the special people in our lives. It's time to catch up with loved ones, sit around our table with our family and friends, and share one of the most delicious meals of the year. In fact, we share much more. We often share the stories of our hearts and lives that tell who we are and what our lives are about. We share our hopes. We share our dreams. It is right and proper that we gather this evening to prepare our hearts for this great sharing on Thanksgiving Day. In focusing on the divine in our lives, we will prepare ourselves to share on Thanksgiving Day. This service, is a prayerful and spiritual way to make our Thanksgiving Day life-giving and life-affirming for all of our loved ones. This is indeed a distinct honor and grace for St. Mary Parish to be the conduit and locus of this sacred preparation. I invite you to stand and join in the congregational hymn found on the insert for the beauty of the earth. Good evening, welcome. Loving and generous God, we thank you that we may safely gather here tonight and on Thursday with our families and friends. We give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season, 
and for the labors of those who harvest them. Be with us tonight and throughout this season. Fill our hearts with gratitude. Make us faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and for the relief of all who are in need. In the name of all that is holy and all that is good. Amen. I invite you to participate in the responsive reading found in the worship aid. Together we gather together in thanksgiving to God. We recognize that God has made us and this earth, which gives us nurture. We gather together in gratitude for one another. We recognize that we are bearers of God's blessing and love for the earth and its people. Today, we offer thanksgiving also for those other things, for troubles that shape and sharpen our patience, for doubts that let faith moments shine, and for confusions that keep our lives from being rigid. We offer thanksgiving also for sufferings that help us share another's grief, for pains that open our eyes to joy, for sorrows that join our hands to hope, and for loneliness that leads us to the heart of God. For all these gifts by which we have become more human, we give thanks.
the 100th Psalm, first in Hebrew, then in English. Mizmor toda hariu ladonai kol haaretz, ivdu et adonai besimcha, ba'u lefanav birnana, da'u ki adonai hu Elohim, hu asanu, velo anachnu, amo vetzon marito. Bo'u sha'arav betoda, chatzerot bitchila, Hodu lo barachu shemo, ki tov aronai leolam chazdo, ve'al dor vador emunato. A Thanksgiving Psalm. Shout out to the Eternal One, all the earth. Worship the Eternal One in rejoicing. Come before God in glad song. Know that the Eternal One is God. God made us, and we are God's, God's people, and the flock God tends. Come into God's gates in thanksgiving, God's courts in praise. Acclaim God, bless God's name. For the Eternal One is good, God's kindness is forever, and God's faithfulness for all generations. A prayer. O God, may the words of my mouth, may the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Many years ago, I went trick-or-treating with a couple friends from college and their three-year-old daughter. The daughter was dressed as a puppy, and she was adorable. And when she went up to people's doors, you know how it goes on Halloween, she went up to people's doors and she was coached by her parents what to say. They told her, act like a puppy first. And so she said, woof, woof, trick or treat. (laughs) By about the third line, She had totally memorized that and said it each time, getting cuter each time. And her little girl voice elicited responses like, oh, she's so cute, and here, have some candy, take more. (laughs) Interestingly, though, it was harder for the little girl to learn the second part of what her parents coached her to say. And that was a simple line, thank you. It seemed interesting that she would go up and she'd remember the woof, woof, trick or treat, but then her eyes would light up with the candy and she'd turn around to go and her parents would have to whisper from the bushes, say thank you, and she did. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think it was any malice on her part that she forgot to say thank you. I mean, how much malice can you have when you're a three-year-old dressed as a puppy? (laughs) Not much. (laughs) I think the little girl simply forgot to say thank you because she was holding more candy in one bag than she had ever seen up to that point in her life. And that itself must have been just so distracting that she just forgot to be appreciative. I think the same thing may happen to us. We get distracted from time to time and caught up in the crazy busyness that is our daily lives. Distracted by our celebrations, our our shopping for Thanksgiving, for instance. Distracted by our frustrations, by our to-do lists by our angst at what we see and hear and read in the news, distracted maybe by Facebook or one of the other million or so apps we might have on our phones, 
so distracted that we too may forget to say thank you to each other and to God. And that's where today's scripture reading comes in. Like my friends who had to repeatedly coach their daughter, thank you, remember, thank you. So also this psalm reminds us, maybe not in that kind of whispering from the bushes, but it reminds us to say thank you to God who despite our human flaws and shortcomings still daily showers us with blessings. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God and bless God's name, coaches the psalm. And it's good advice, isn't it? In fact, I bet many of us were encouraged in Sunday school or Hebrew school or CCD to memorize this psalm and give thanks as it directs. But have you ever wondered why? Why? Why is it important to give thanks? Why does this psalm direct us to do so? Surely God doesn't need his or her ego stroked by our words of gratitude. So why are we directed to say thanks, to be thankful? To answer this question, let me start by giving you a little background on the text. Scholars believe that Psalm 100 may have been written way back in the time of King David, which was roughly a thousand years before the Common Era. It could have been one of the psalms sung by David and the people of ancient Israel as they celebrated and gave thanks for the return of the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. Scholars believe it also could have been sung down through the centuries at annual New Year festivals that celebrate and give thanks for the reign of God on earth, past, present, and future. Whatever its exact origin, scholars agree that one of the purposes of Psalm 100 is to teach us something very important. The crux of the psalm can be found in verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is God that has made us and not we ourselves, say some translations. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. This psalm reminds us of something that we human beings may seem to naturally tend to forget, that God made us, not the other way around. God is in charge. We are not. We are not self-made monarchs who are entitled to privileges or rights or comforts that others are denied. Of course, everyone here knows that, don't we? Who among us would argue that some of us should be entitled to privileges that others should be denied? Yet, we live in a culture that bombards us with a different message. One commentary I read on this text points out that our culture encourages us to be self-made men and women and youth, and that most of us, perhaps unconsciously, have come to believe a popular saying, it's my life to live. But when we, consciously or unconsciously, begin to live like this, like I'm in charge, and my rights, my privileges, my comfort are more important than yours, then that's when community disintegrates. Divisions occur, anger lurks just under the surface and explodes easily between people. Writing over 35 years ago, biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann described this self-centered trend in Western culture and the antidote to it. Our world, Brueggemann writes, is at the edge of insanity and we with it. Inhumaneness is developed as a scientific enterprise. Greed is celebrated as economic advance. Power runs unbridled to destructiveness. In a world like this one, says 
Brueggemann, Psalm 100 is an act of sanity whereby we may be reclothed in our rightful minds. Brueggemann argues that Psalm 100 is an antidote to self-centeredness through its reminder that God is sovereign, we are not. Psalm 100 is an antidote to self-centeredness through its practical coaching on how we should live as thankful people, remembering to worship and praise God daily for the good gifts that God gives. Those gifts are summarized in verse 5. For God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. Now let me say a word here about worship. When Psalm 100 talks about worshiping God with thanksgiving, it's actually hard to convey in English exactly what that means. In our culture, we may tend to think of worship as something we do in a church building or a synagogue or other house of worship, maybe for an hour, once a week, possibly twice. But during this COVID crisis, when meeting in person posed risks to our health, we've been forced to change our definition of worship at least a little bit. And this psalm can help us continue to do that. I read in a commentary that the Hebrew word for the verb to worship used in this psalm is la avod. I had to check with Rabbi Tom to make sure that was the right word and that I was pronouncing it correctly. Thank God he coached me well. At least I hope I did it right. Um, so that word to worship means to orient one's whole life and existence to a sovereign master. Let me repeat that. The Hebrew word for the verb to worship used in the psalm in verse 2 means to orient one's whole life and existence to a sovereign master. So if we pair this all-encompassing understanding of worship with the act of giving thanks, thanksgiving, then we get a powerful answer to our question, why give thanks? We give thanks because the act of giving thanks is the primary means by which we break through our illusion of self-sufficiency. We give thanks because the act of giving thanks is the primary way by which we align ourselves with God's steadfast love, which is the true source of all things. What would our world be like if we each made this a priority, if we were disciplined about it? How would our world change if we made it part of our daily routine to consciously give thanks to God, to recognize our dependence on God, to align ourselves with God's love? Author Richard Peace, in his book, Noticing God, writes about a spiritual practice called examine, where people are encouraged to journal every day as part of their prayer life. In the practice, practice of examine, Peace directs people to write down five things every day that they are thankful for. And then he encourages people to look at those things that they are thankful for and to see where God is in the midst of those things. Note it, he says, write it down. And then he says, also, after you do that, write down three things you wish you had done differently. As I've engaged in this practice from time to time, I've come to realize a number of things that what we write down or the amount of things we write down isn't what's important, whether we write down five or three or two or one thing that we are thankful for. It's the discipline of doing it that matters. It's the discipline of actively looking for God's blessings, being aware of them in our lives. That's what trains our minds to think differently. The discipline of giving thanks is what pulls us out of our self-focus 
and realigns us with God's love. When we train ourselves, or more accurately, when we choose to allow ourselves to be trained by God, when we give thanks, that's when we become more loving. We become more aware, not only of the ways that we've been blessed, but also we become more aware of the world around us, of the joy and pain of others. We become more aware of the places where others may have missed out on gifts that we've taken for granted. And when we become aware of that, we can do something about it. We can consciously choose to share. We can consciously choose to work together to build relationships that create a more equitable society for us all. So my friends, if you haven't already done so, I invite you to commit Psalm 100 to memory, in Hebrew or in English. Let it work on you, on me. May Psalm 100 live in our hearts and teach us to give thanks daily, to align ourselves more closely with God's love, and to share God's good gift with others. Amen. Knowing God's word by heart, speaking from the heart, a thanksgiving gift for each of us tonight. We gather knowing that there are many layers to our Thanksgiving holiday. From its complicated origins to its cultural purposes, the gathering of family and friends to break bread, sometimes at a table where there is a great deal of disagreement and conflict, other times a table solely surrounded by love and care, and for most of us, some mixture of the two. This gathering to break bread on a holy day is a sacred act, an act which reminds us of the ties that bind each to all despite difference and the sanctity of connection. But the layer of thanksgiving that I want to draw your attention to this evening is the act of thanksgiving itself, the act of remembering our gratitude and paying it forward, which must always, always go hand in hand. To help us remember our gratitude, I'm very grateful to be able to welcome Barbara Gilmeister from Gilly's House to share a few words with us about the important work and ministry that takes place there. After Barbara has had a chance to say a little bit about Gilly's house, I'll return and invite you to an act of generosity. Barbara, welcome this evening. Would you please share a few words with us? Thank you, I'm honored to be here. Over 93,000 people died last year from drug overdoses. 93,000 is equal to the populations of Franklin, Rentham, Bellingham, Norfolk, and Foxborough in one year. Every one of these 93,000 
was someone's mother, father, sister, brother, and child. There isn't a family now who isn't affected by this disease. Recovery from addiction is a lifelong struggle. It's a lifelong mission. There's no quick fix, which, it's, which is why it's called long-term recovery. Gilly's House, a nonprofit sober recovery house for men, was established three and a half years ago in memory of my son, Stephen, whose friends called him Gilly, who passed away from a drug overdose five years ago. Gilly's House is located in the Sheldonville section of Rentham. Some of you may know it as the old Sheldonville nursing home. We have 21 residents in long-term recovery. Insurance does not pay for this. There are no government monies that pay for it or that help support our cause. So we rely on the generosity of others to help us fulfill our mission and support our men with a great deal of kindness and humanity. We have been blessed with tremendous support from school groups, faith-based groups, private corporations, individuals, neighbors, fellowship organizations, to name a few. We have had donations of goods and services, sweat equity, monetary donations, and our popular meal donations, to name a few. Our house is a beautiful, warm place that the men are proud to call home. Thanks to the incredible support from everyone, the men at Gillies feel like their, loves, their lives matter. We can't begin to thank you enough for thinking of us at this time of year. Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, the altar rabbi, said that with a little bit of light, we can sweep away much darkness. It is our mission to share our light with others to make this world a better place. May we all be blessed to bring warmth where there is cold and kindness everywhere. Thank you very much. I want to thank you, Barbara, for sharing with us the important work that happens at Gilly's House and especially for your leadership in this service to our town, to our region, and to people who are in need. Many of you know that in typical years, the interfaith Thanksgiving service in Franklin requests a special contribution to support our fuel assistance fund. And tonight I want to thank all of you who have contributed to that fund over many, many years. It continues to serve the needs of many people during challenging winters. And I want to share the good news with you that we believe the fuel assistance fund this year is in very good financial shape. Given that, and the exceedingly important need of supporting recovery work in our region this year, the Interfaith Council invites you to shed a little light by returning a gift of thanksgiving, an act of generosity to support Gilly's House tonight. If you're here in the sanctuary, you'll find that there are baskets to make a contribution in at the exits. You can write your checks out to Franklin Interfaith Council. And if it's easier, you're welcome to make a contribution online at franklininterfaith.org. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or joining us online, again, that's franklininterfaith.org. Thank you for considering a generous donation. Thank you for caring about the work that awaits us, and thank you for being a thanksgiving people. May it be a blessing. And now, would you please join me in singing our congregational hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
our loving and generous God. We thank thee this evening as we gather in this beautiful parish. We thank thee that we could come and unite in our faith, all women and men and youth together, and give thanksgiving in the spirit of humility. We know that all things that we have that are good are from thee, and we thank thee at this time for all those great things that we've been given. We thank thee for all those who are giving this evening, are charitable, and are following thy example. Please bless those who have given of their time to be here tonight uh, or to prepare in this wonderful service of thanksgiving. We express our love and again our gratitude for your glorious and wonderful messages that we could hear tonight and for thy spirit that we could feel being here together. We do this in the spirit of thanksgiving. In the name of our glorious Lord, amen. <laughs> 